We created this video to show students how to put together a final presentation for specific courses requiring it. This final presentation consists of four parts, which you can see on the title slide. There are actually three individual parts to this project, an annotated bibliography, a script, and a PowerPoint presentation. The fourth step is putting it all together to create a final presentation. The first part is to create an annotated bibliography. By now, you should have selected a topic and approved it through your instructor. I hope you picked something you're interested in learning more about. It makes it a lot more fun to do the research. ERC tutors are great with this project, so don't be afraid to ask for help finding materials. One way to help keep all the sources you're consulting is to use index cards or even just a notebook. If you use an index card or a notebook page, write down the citation information like the author's name, the publisher, the title, the date it was published, and the page numbers you're interested in. If you already have a specific passage or a quote that you find interesting, you can note that on the same card with the page number. All research must come from the ERC or the online databases. You're going to need at least seven different sources. What that means is you might use one article from ProQuest, another from Facts on File, another from Academic Search Elite, and so on. You may also decide to use a print book as a source. There are over 200 different databases, so you'll have no problem finding seven sources. So what exactly is an annotated bibliography? It sounds intimidating. It's not. It's just a type of bibliography that also provides a short summary or an analysis of the source. To break it down, let's look at what annotated means. To annotate is to take notes, and an annotation is to add notes with comments or expl explanations. So if you're taking notes in class, you're actually annotating. An annotation is usually about 150 words in length, which is usually four to six sentences, but your instructor may require something different, so be sure to ask. Annotations may include the source's main purpose, its intended audience, why the source is relevant to your research, information about the author's background and credibility, as well as their observations and conclusions. It may also include your conclusions or observations. Your annotation may not include all six pieces listed here, but it should cover some of them. Now that you know what an annotation is, let's look at a bibliography. A bibliography is a list of sources consulted during research. When using a works cited page in MLA or a references page in APA, the difference is that those only include works that were used in the research. A bibliography includes everything you consulted, even if you don't end up using the source in your final paper. So an annotated bibliography is a list of all the sources consulted for a research project with notes for each source. This is an example of what an annotation may look like. This source is a book with one author. The citation style is APA 7th edition. So the citation is just a normal citation with a hanging indent. The annotation explains why the source is important to the thesis and what it's about. It also shows what the research in the book includes. It's a little shorter than a typical annotation with under 100 words, but that's following this professor's instructions. This is the same source, and its annotation is an MLA-style 9th edition. Notice the citation format is different, but the annotation is exactly the same. Now, you have the first step down because you understand what an annotated bibliography is. So let's look at part two, creating the script. What is a script? 
It's simply a written outline for a presentation. Basically, it's what you're going to say when you're presenting to your audience. Think of a movie script. It's sort of like that. There are some good tips for writing a great script with one of the most important being the KISS rule. Keep it short and simple. Your script should include a brief introduction, the body, of course, and a summary, much like an essay or a research paper. The text on your slide should be easily readable. Try not to exceed 8 to 10 words per slide, and remember your script should differ from what is written on the slide. Do not try to read your slides. I've created a mini PowerPoint presentation within this video to show you how you might set all this up. Your script should be about five pages long because your PowerPoint presentation must last about five to seven minutes for this assignment. Your cover slide will probably look something like this. You'll have the title of your project, the school, the course, and your name. The script at the bottom would be under notes so that your audience isn't seeing the actual script. For the example that your instructor provided in your written instructions, this is how the second slide might look. Notice there's not a lot of written text and you have a nice visual. Also notice that the image credits the creator. Again, the script would be entered under notes so that the audience isn't actually seeing your script. You can see the script varies from the exact text on the slide. The next slide is very similar. You have little text, but the visual says it all. You'd be saying what your script shows under slide three. In the fourth slide, you might provide a brief overview of your topic. You can include a list of bullet points, and then for the body of the presentation, you'll focus on one bullet point at a time. You can see in the script what you'd be listing for bullet points. And if you'll look at that script, it says some of the things we'll cover today are ways to support working memory by considering extraneous, intrinsic, and germane load. This is the slide where you provide a summary to wrap things up. Notice the catchy ending in your script. After all, today's children are tomorrow's future. The audience will appreciate the reminder of the importance of what you're actually covering. Always include a reference page to credit all of your sources. With this slide or slides, you can ask your audience if they have any questions or comments. If it's not a live presentation, you can say, if anyone has any questions they'd like to ask, please don't hesitate to contact me. You can reach me at, and you're probably going to give them your email address. Your final slide should be a written thank you, especially if it's a pre-recorded presentation. Include your name, school information, class, and email address again. That's a mini version of how you can start with a rough draft for your project. Now let's look at part three of your project, creating the PowerPoint. You've done all the research, you've prepared your annotated bibliography and written your script. It's time to create the PowerPoint show. PowerPoint has come a long way. It's an ideal tool for presentations. You have the tools to create amazing visuals, animations, and audio. As I mentioned before, use bright colors and visuals to keep your audience engaged and try not to have too much text on each slide. You've completed the three parts of the project, so it's time to put it all together. So how do you do that? I'm glad you asked. So this is how your title slide would probably look and the script would be exactly what I had in the mini version 
it would say good morning can everyone hear me and see the screen okay my name is John before I begin talking about graphic design I'd like to mention why I decided to talk about this topic so remember once you're in presentation view the audience can't see the notes at the bottom this is all they're going to see I've mentioned notes view a few times this is how you would enter your notes select view at the top and notes page at the left the view will look like the image at the right you can copy and paste your script there so this is what it looks like to you this is the second slide with the notes view and you can see the creator has their notes down here and again all your audience sees is the slide and they don't see the notes once you've added all of your notes for each slide you can go to the normal view if you're presenting live you would use the slideshow selection you'll see your notes again your audience won't for this particular project you'll use the record tab at the top select from beginning so that you can start with the title slide this is what you'll see use the record button at the top center then you'll see your script I recommend using the teleprompter view which you can select at the bottom under views you're seeing the view on the left but your audience sees what's on the right you also have the option to blur your background in teleprompter mode it's a great option unless you have a perfect background once you've completed your presentation stop the recording use the export to video option to create an mp4 video once it's done you can save that to your OneDrive and share the link with anyone who needs it or even on blackboard if required here are some tips to create an a plus project research use solid research remember you may not actually use all of the sources listed in your bibliography so your references page and your bibliography page may differ select which citation style you plan to use double check to make sure you're following one consistently it must be APA style 7th edition or MLA style 9th edition you cannot mix two citation styles we have videos and libguides for both available at the ERC don't read your script make sure you understand the material so that you can discuss it follow directions double check everything proofread 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 make sure all of your images are cited too don't forget your references page at the end ask your audience if they have questions thank your audience for their time and attention visit the ERC we have some great recording equipment and tutors on hand to help you can even practice your presentation using a large screen TV and we will provide suggestions on how to improve above all don't panic a little planning and thought goes a long way if you follow these steps you can create an outstanding final presentation and just come by the ERC if you have any questions.